The camera calibration panel in Adobe Lightroom offers interesting possibilities to tune your colors of your photo. What is it good for and how it works will you see now. A tutorial by Light Color Shadow. The camera calibration is a very elementary tool to change the colors. Elementary because it changes the red, green and blue channels of the RAW file to going deeper. A RAW file of your camera is no image file like JPEG or a TIFF or something like that. It is a data file which contains all the information for a program like Lightroom to build a picture out of it. You can change the picture profile afterwards, this wouldn't be possible with a JPEG. And this also demonstrates that Adobe is using its own interpretation of the RAW files. You may have wondered why the picture on the camera display doesn't look like the same like here in Lightroom. This is caused by the interpretation of Adobe. For every camera model, Adobe creates an own handling process of the RAW files. But of course you can change it to the camera specific profiles, like me, I take all my pictures in the flat profile to get the highest dynamic range. And step for step now. I'll demonstrate you this at this long exposure which shows a sunset at the Baltic Sea. The process describes the internal handling of the raw interpretation. Adobe edited a new one in the last big update in Lightroom CC. If you change the version, you will change everything. Even the sliders in the basic panel will change. So you should always use the new or current version, which is available to have all the possibilities to edit your picture. And as mentioned, in the profile selection, you can choose the different camera profiles, which are also available in the camera settings. The Adobe profile is a really good trade-off between flat colors, light and shadows, and the flat profile, because sometimes the real flat profile is just too dull, even after processing everything. But this is a good example. When I choose the flat profile, the shadows become not so dark and offer more visible details. It's a matter of taste. The tint slider only affects the shadows of the image. So I can give the shadows a bit more magenta or a more greenish tone, or I can also compensate color casts. Now we arrive to the very interesting sliders. With the RGB sliders you change the whole light which the camera has captured. So every camera works with a red, green and blue model. These are luminous colors. So when I change the red hue slider to the right, the whole red in the picture disappears. If I drag it to the left, then it becomes more red. And when I change the saturation of the red, then it almost looks like I'm increasing the vibrance of the image. But what is happening is that the red pixels becoming more present. For a better understanding, when I go to the HSL panel and change there the red saturation, this happens. Just the horizon becomes a very strong orange. So the saturation in the HSL panel is just changing the pixels which are already that color you have selected, in this case red. This is the difference between these two panels and this is why the camera calibration is much more elementary. And of course I can change the hue of the blue channel to get a more turquoise water and to let it more pop I increase the saturation of the blue. Hmm, quite unrealistic and too colored. I'm more a fan of this. So this is working better for me, a more moody look. Anyway, the camera calibration is always worth a try to find a special look for your photo and it is working with every motive. So don't be too shy to work with that powerful tool. We are finished, thanks for enjoying this tutorial and you can leave a like or a subscription for my channel. You can also visit my website lightcolorshadow.com to take a look on my gallery and get more tutorials and more information about photography. Thanks and until next time, bye bye.